Good morning, everybody. Um, today is the Homesick Art Fair. It's a virtual art show for artists who are used to showing their work at, at outdoor art shows. Uh, a friend of mine named Chris Plummer came up with the idea of having a virtual art fair. So my plan was to set a little booth up like I would at an art fair up on my porch, but we're having rain today in, in Kentucky, so I've put it in the house. So um, let's go in. I'll show you what, what I've been working on. Before we go into the house to look at the art, I wanted to show you some of Mother Nature's art that is really special. I've got a bunch of poppies in my garden, and they don't last for too long, but they really are pretty when they are all popping. And I think as an artist, I love to create beauty, but nature sure is hard to beat. I love these poppies. And um, for a, this is also a, a graveyard for some of my pottery. The pots that don't exactly make it all the way end up in this garden with the poppies. I just wanted to show that to you all. I, I really love flowers and think they're pretty. Let's see, I want to switch back. Here we go. Can you see me now? Hey, good morning. All right, so, so the idea of this art fair is there are 16 different artists from around the area. Some are as far away as Oklahoma, but the majority are, are um, Kentucky and Indiana artists. We're, we're all setting up a booth like we would at a art fair, and you could follow the hashtag homesickartfair to see all 16 of the different different artists. So come on in the house, I'll show you I'll show you my booth. My dogs are outside, so I'm gonna call them. Hey buddy, Lulu Bell, come on. Let's go in the house. Buddy Lulu, come on. I think Lulu Bell's doing something in the yard. We're, we're gonna give her just a minute. Here she comes. Alright, let's go in the house. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. All right, if, if you haven't visited before, when you first walk into my door, it's my art studio. Most people just have a hallway, but um, this is where I paint. The light's good. Um, usually there's a whole lot of light here, but um, I've taken all the lights to put in my display. Let me flip this around and you can see my booth. So this is my booth, and one thing I really like about the virtual art show is that, that um, on a rainy day, I'm inside, so all of my work stays dry. I'm going to give a quick review. Most of my paintings are around here, and then almost everything else is either a woodcut or a linoleum block print, and I have them all back around here. I'm going to give you a quick look around if there's anything you'd like to see up close or if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. This is just like us hanging out in person at a real art show, but um, we've all been... Having to stay home came so all of a sudden. Me and my artist friends have really had to improvise and figure out what are we going to do. Well, there's Buddy. He walked under the wall. Um, but we, we've all had to improvise and, and figure out new ways of working from home. And as you know, art shows are a mass gathering. And it's probably going to be a while before we have any more art fairs like we're used to. Um, my friend Chris Plummer came up with this idea. He's a printmaker that I admire who lives in Niagara, Kentucky. He um, just set a booth up in his yard and had a virtual art show. And... It was such a good experience for him that he invited his other friends to to participate for this one. And I love the idea. I, I think it, it's a great way to um, still share art and, and connect with other people without putting them at risk of their safety. And um, 
And I know that he mentioned if if this goes well, he'll probably do this again. So hopefully this goes well. I, I'm having fun so far, even though nobody's asked any questions or said hi or anything. But hi, hi everybody. I I do see you see you out there watching. Um, I guess what I would normally do at a art show. If someone's looking at something, they might have a question about the, the inspiration of a piece, or, or maybe you might have a question about the process of a piece, since most of the work I've been doing over the last um, six months or so, I've been doing a lot of printmaking. I, I love printmaking. I um, recently went to Mexico, where I got to work with a lot of other printmakers and, and learn about the 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 history of printmaking and the culture of printmaking and and one thing I really love about printmaking is that it's one of the arts that it's kind of like an art for the people if if you think about paintings it, it might take a long time for me to make a painting I could spend two weeks three weeks a month to make one painting and unfortunately there aren't a lot of people that can you know help me pay my bills and survive for weeks or months in order to have that painting but with with printmaking you have lots of prints and artists are able to sell them much more affordably where everybody could have something that was handmade um a handmade piece of art and um in mexico in particular printmaking is a um i just got a text with the question about the show so Meredith wants to know about the stacked bunnies and pigs. So let's look at the pigs first. Let me flip this around. Okay, so Meredith, here are the stacked pigs. This is a woodcut, and um, if, if you... I, I know you're familiar with my work. What, one theme that I really love is... is um, generations of animals standing on top of each other and and my idea is sort of like dad's on the bottom and then mom and then the baby is standing on top and and um everybody's holding up the next generation and and this is that version for pigs and i'll zoom in so you can see some of the details all of the artwork is done by carving i'll take a piece of wood and carve away any part that i want to be white And um, this is framed, but I also sell woodcuts unframed. And this particular frame was made by me. I'll show you the back. I, I took raw wood and, and cut it and put three coats of paint and distressed it. And the frame itself takes so long, I take a lot of pride in it. And I'll sign my frames. You see how on the back of the frame it says, Handmade Frame by Ken Swenson. Okay, and... Let's see. So, Carla Cross wants to know about the pigs. Oh, how much? Let me flip it around, and you can see. Now, framed... Let's see, can you still see while I'm looking at my text? Framed, this is 240 and I also sell these unframed for $60. And because we're having to adjust to all of this, this, this um, doing things from home, I'm happy to pay the shipping for anything you buy as long as you live in the United States. So, so all you'd need to pay is the um, $240. And if you live in Kentucky, you'd have sales tax. Um, or if you wanted... The, the print unframed, it's uh, $60. And everything that size is the same price. So this bear with the heart is also 16 by 20. It's also a woodcut. And um, and um, I, hopefully I answered you, your question. Bunnies. Okay, so let me show you the bunnies. I've got some framed bunnies here. These are lino cuts. It's the same process as the woodcut, but 
I'll cut into linoleum, which is a little more forgiving when I'm working really small with details. And I went through a series of, of bunnies where, um, I don't know, they're just, they're just a fun garden animal that, that I really have fun uh, carving. So here's a bunny with a carrot. And I've got another bunny. It isn't lit super well. Let me put some light on it. These are cool because they're part of a group when I first started doing multicolored prints. You, you notice this has a, um, instead of just being one color, you have a background color and a foreground color. And I sell these unframed as well. I, I think they're... I think they're, they're either $25 or $30, and if you'd like them framed, they're $70. Like I said, I'll, I'll ship to you. I'll pay for the shipping. Let's see, I think there's a few other bunnies. There are. There's some bunnies eating cabbage, or stealing cabbage. They're, they're not eating it yet, but here's a bunny. They're stealing cabbage from my garden. And here's the heist. There. I... I haven't had time to frame these bunnies yet, but over the last month I've been working on a series of bunnies doing household chores, and I call them my dust bunnies. So here's a bunny um, doing laundry, and um, I think these these are $25. You, you could order any of these from my website. Um, if, if you can't find it on the website, you could just send me a message and we could do do Venmo or PayPal or, or whatever to, to get these bunnies to you. Um, I could frame these. It will, it'll just take a, about a week to put the frame together. Um, here is the bunny doing dishes. My, my fantasy is that when I, um, go to sleep, these bunnies will come and do all my chores for me. Uh-oh. And then here's the bunny sweeping. There, there's one more bunny doing gardening. And for some reason it's not here, but I'm going to do another, um, I'm going to do another live walkthrough later on today. And I'll, I'll have all of those bunnies ready for you to see then. Meredith, hopefully I answered your, your question. Um, let's see. I, I was talking about printmaking and, and how I loved printmaking was kind of like an art for everybody. And, um, and, and it's been like that historically. I know, like, um, in the history of the world, back when the Gutenberg Press came out, they, that invention made it easy and affordable to make books, and, and the Bible in particular made it affordable so that everybody could have a Bible, or, or a lot more people could have access to the Bible and books than before when a monk had to hand, hand draw each, each, um, oh, the bunnies, Meredith would like the bunnies with the cabbage. Thank you, Meredith. Um, now which bunnies with the cabbage would you like? I've got them pulling it out of the ground and then I have them lifting it up. You should be my assistant. You're you're doing great. I, I feel like I should um definitely give you a, a commission on this. So so um w which would you like? Um you could just let me know in a in a message. Um let's see, let me know. Now all of you who know me, I get distracted really easy. I, I'm easily thrown off course. Um, so if you all have any questions, I, I could go on and on talking about printmaking, the history of printmaking, its, it's role in the, Mexi the Mexican Revolution, and, and um, all of those things are really interesting to me, but maybe not to you. Now, someone wanted to know about the ducks. Um, this is an acrylic painting. These are Canada geese, and I live close to a big city park with a lake. And, and, um, every day I'll see these Canada geese and they're, they're pretty much there all year. And they, they've been a big inspiration for me. And I just love the lively, 
the, the movement of the geese, and, and I can almost hear them honking, honking away. Um, I could zoom in and you could see some of the details of the work. And let me show you the price. This this is an original painting. It's five eighty. I think this is a really cool painting. This this size is really interesting because I, I want to say in every room I have some part of my wall that doesn't fit a traditional sized painting, like like this or or the painting above. And sometimes a nice panoramic painting just fills the space perfectly. And um, I, th I think these are really cool. And um, Meredith wanted the top cabbage bunnies. So I'm going to take them just like I would at an art show. I'm going to take this off the wall. And I'm going to put this away so I can send that to Meredith. Thank you, Meredith. And maybe I'll just shift this up a little bit. This is my first time doing this, everybody, so let me know how I'm doing. I, I have no idea if this is even close to visiting an art show or not. Um, I'm just, what, what I like to do at an art show is just sort of browse around and look at everything. Usually something in particular gets my attention, and I'll, I'll kind of zoom into it. Like, right now I've been trying to work on a garden. I'm not doing very good at it, but... Right here's a, um, a lino cut of two people working on their garden, and, and I really like all the vegetables as they kind of work back towards the background in the house. And, and there's some little things like, I love this chicken in the back and the pig, pig down there. And... Um, Here's a bunny and a cow. Well, I just sold the painting of Lulubelle to Meredith. Thank you. Um, this is this is my dog Lulubelle, and she's got a great personality, and and she's just always curious about everything, and full of energy, and. I love her very, she's one of my best friends. I, I have two dogs, so I don't want to say very best friend, but this is Lulubelle, and, and she has found her forever home, so so I'm really thrilled. Thank you so much for your support, Meredith. I'm, I'm um, you know what, I know you well enough, I will hand deliver these to you, and I, I always like coming to see, see you at your shop, um, if, if, um, you all aren't familiar with with um, Meredith. She has a, a needlepoint company, and and if you like doing needlepoint, she's the the best there is. She sells hand painted canvases, and um, some of them feature my work. Um, but she she's been a great supporter of of my art and lots of artists um, all around, and and I'm really really grateful. Um, so I guess I'll take Lulu Bell down. I hate to take her off the wall. She looks so good. But um, I guess I'll do that. It, it kind of gives you the feeling of an art show. You know how sometimes I'll go to an art show and, and I'll see something I really like. And, um, and then I'll walk away. I'll say, I'm going to get it. When I come back, I, if it's still there, I'll pick it up. And um, sometimes it's a bummer when, it, when you come back and that thing I really wanted wasn't still there. Um, Usually my, my original paintings sell sell pretty quick. I, I don't get to do as many as as with printmaking and, and with original paintings there's only one. So so it's kind of hard to keep a wall full of them. I have some more up here. I've got this set of birds on the right. And um oh so my my agent, Meredith, tells me that Carla wants to see the lady cooking. So, right here, 
is what they're actually doing. It's it's a mom and daughter, or maybe it's a grandmother and a daughter, um, canning their vegetables for, for the winter. And this is a lino cut, and it's um, 11 by 14 in size. It's, it's framed. Uh, I didn't make this particular frame, but I'll zoom in. Some of the details I love about this print are the little tomatoes. Do you see the little tomato that Grandma, she's holding the knife and cutting? And then the daughter, she's in charge of the cans. And you've got them all on the stove in the background there. I um, I have this unframed. If, if you have like to frame yourself, I, I know that sometimes... My style of framing doesn't work for your house. Um, I'm trying to remember how much those cost. That It's on my website. I'm pretty sure it's $30 unframed. So Carla, hopefully you got a good look. I don't know if there's any, any if you have any questions or, or I'm happy to zoom in. You know, of course, everything's signed. Um, And, and the title of this um, is Yes, We Can, because they're canning. It's kind of a joke on, on um, you know, positive thinking and, and being able to do, do what you set your mind to do, and also that tradition of canning and putting your food away at the end of the year. And underneath them, I, I like this guy with the with the chickens. Um, this is sort of based on my life. I thought I wanted to be a chicken farmer, and I I naively bought about fifty chickens and didn't know what I was doing. And um, I had a chicken coop for them, and if if I was on top of things, I would sprinkle some chicken food in the coop, and they'd all go in the coop, and they'd roost in the coop. But if I didn't pay attention to the day and it got dark before I put them in their coop, the chickens would go up in the tree and you don't want your chickens to sleep in a tree because fox and raccoons and who knows what kind of wildlife might might um, try to eat my chickens. So, so I'd have to climb the tree and get the chickens out of the tree and they have sharp claws and, and um, I wasn't smiling like in this picture he's he's smiling and everything's good but um, but th these are the ch pull of the chickens out of the tree at the night time I was talking about printmaking and, and the influence of, of um, printmaking with with art for the people and and the Mexican Revolution and how how printmaking was really important in in all cultures, but but their culture in particular. And this print is one that I made um, a year ago um, for a festival in Louisville. It was a, a cultural celebration by a organization called Cornbread and Tortillas, and their goal is is um, cultural exchange and understanding between Appalachia and Latin America. And I happen to love both cultures very much. And for that festival, they invited me to come and do some kind of an activity. So I carved this woodcut that um, has the motto of Kentucky. In Kentucky, our motto is United We Stand. And in Spanish, a, a very similar phrase is El Pueblo Unido. And cornbread and tortillas both come from the same plant. This is um, corn. And, and as an activity, I had this woodcut, and everyone who visited the festival could ink their own woodcut, and they were able to make one um, and, and have a souvenir to take home. And, and I'm really proud of this print. It's just kind of a neat, uh, a neat thing for me. Let's see, I'm going to scroll and see if anybody has questions. I see a lot of people watching. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'd, I'd love to call you all out individually. Um, so nobody has any questions. Hopefully, I'm doing an okay job explaining what I'm doing. Um, so 
this is the show. I've, I've got most of the smaller prints are in this part of the booth. Now, down in this corner, this is kind of special. This is a charcoal drawing. And usually when I paint, I use lots of color. And charcoal is unique in that you don't have any color. All you have is um, tones of color to work with. So, so um, this is one of those charcoal drawings. I, I only have a few, but they're really neat. I, I love black and white as, as well as color. Um, so here is one. I'm going to scroll over this way to show you the other charcoal drawing that I have. This is a farm scene. And it's a pretty typical Kentucky farm scene. And these are originals. Um, with my paintings, I do make G clay prints of my paintings. So, of course, there's only one original, but I, I will sell reproductions of the, the, the painting. And um, with charcoals, I don't make copies of charcoals. So this, this is a really unique, one-of-a-kind um, piece of art. I've got one more... No, I have two more charcoal drawings. Um, here is one that I made while I was camping with some friends in Florida. And they had done laundry and had their laundry hanging on a line and I, I just thought the scene was was cute as a button so I got my charcoals out and made this charcoal drawing and then this charcoal drawing is the Fleming County Courthouse and um, Fleming County is, is a pretty rural community and it had the cutest courthouse on a hill with, with little um, I just got a question from Joni about, uh-oh, I lost the question, but I, I think it was how much is the charcoal and can you show a close-up? So if you're interested, I'll come back to tell you about the Fleming County charcoal. Um, this one is $120, and I could do a close-up of those details, and then... This one, these are both about 8 by 10, and then they're framed in an 11 by 14 frame. And this is also 120. And then the big charcoals, um, the one with the sheep, is 280. And this, I didn't make this frame, but Joni, you know, I can I could swap out whatever kind of frame you like. Um, and I'll zoom in so you can see some of the details. Let me start with the little bird coming out of the tree. And then as you cross the horizon, there's some trees and a barn and another bird coming from the other direction. And then in the background, you have a little house and barn with, with a group of sheep. And there's a bird in the tree. And this sheep, he wants to, he's kind of a wild sheep. He's jumping the fence there because he wants to swim in the lake with the ducks. But this sheep, he's happy where he is. So he's just going to stay and enjoy that green grass. So these are the details of the sheep charcoal drawing. And then the farm scene... Is all, it's the same size, so it's also 280. And, and the size, I want to say the frame is 24 by 20 by 24. And then the artwork looks like it's about 16 by 20. I'll start at the horizon. You've got a, a farmhouse in the background with some trees and clouds. And then you've got a barn. This is a, a beef farm, so you've got some cows standing next to the barn and then as you come closer to the foreground there's a field and tree with some houses and little outbuildings and then there's a truck he it looks like he's going home after a day working out in the the field and then this sheep maybe it wandered off from the other painting and ended up 
ended up here. So this is the, let me back, I'm on my knees, so give me a second to back up. So those are the charcoal drawings. Here's the other one. Maybe I could flip around to give you a sense of the size. I don't know. It's a pretty nice size painting, 20 by 24. Um, you know, depending on the size of your wall. Um, and now, right above my head, these goats are part of that series of the different animals standing on top of each other. You've got the daddy goat and the mama goat and the baby goat on the top. See, let me flip this back around. So, well, nobody's talking much in the chat. I, I guess um, I could see people are still watching. So I guess it's it's um, interesting. I love look. I could look at art and talk about art all day. But I, I wonder if if this translates to a, to an at home experience. Um, I kind of miss talking to you all. Uh, so for me, I, I love having a person in front of me and being able to see what people go ooh and ah over. But, um, you know, we're all adapting to, we're trying to learn to work from home. And, um, you know, this, this is better than just sitting at home lonely. Um, I, I was talking to you all about the Fleming County Courthouse and what a cute little rural town it is. They have a little courthouse up on a hill and, and a classic Main Street USA um, that kind of leads up to the courthouse. And I like progress, but sometimes I wish things would stay the way they are. And Fleming County has moved their courthouse. On, on this corner, they took down all of those classic Main Street shops and put up this gigantic justice center which which um i've never thank goodness i've never had to go into that justice center but um it looks very big and new and modern and and it really doesn't feel like a small town thing like like the right side of of that street in in flemingsburg so um so that's that. I've got something kind of interesting up here. You all know I work in clay. It's um, more more as a hobby than my full-time work, but, but I do love working in clay. And I had this idea of a tile that was kind of like a three-dimensional piece of art that could sit on a wall. And I'll take this down so you can see it. It's um, This is red clay, and there's a little hook so that it can hang on your wall and then these blocks make it float from the wall a little bit and um, it's just it's a little experiment I was working on I think it's a really neat way to to mix the different mediums I like to print and I like to paint and I like to sculpt and I like to make make pots and um, whenever I can cross over between the different different things that's always fun and I've got a couple pots. I, I don't really sell pottery online. I, I feel like a pot should be touched. And, and I also don't like shipping pottery because it's real fragile. But um, this is part of a batch of um, porcelain. I, I've always wanted to work in porcelain. And if you uh, look at my profile, I did a video a few weeks ago where I showed everything from the, from the group. But um, like with all of my pots, I signed the bottom with my name and the date. This is a, um, a little ginger jar. Lately in printmaking I've been doing a lot of imagery with acorns and oak leaves. So speaking of crossing over between the different arts, this technique is real similar to printmaking, but it's in clay. And um, it's a little different from printmaking. You, you do all the work. All of this is carving. And um, unlike printmaking, you only get one. So I'm, I'm not able to, to stamp more 
like I would with, with printmaking. So, so, um, I don't know. Here, here's a good example of the oak leaves and the acorns. This is a pretty large size woodcut. It's 16 by 20. You've got two squirrels. They're getting ready for winter and, um, picking acorns to, to put into their, their hoard. I did a big series of squirrels. Squirrels doing all kinds of different things. I'll show you some more squirrels if you all like squirrels. Um, some of the squirrels were doing practical things like getting ready for winter. These squirrels are, are part of a, a bluegrass band. You have one squirrel playing the bass. Here's another squirrel playing the mandolin, and I've got a squirrel up here playing the fiddle. Oh, I've got a question about the ginger jar. Um, the ginger jar is $85, and the bowl, the porcelain bowl, is also $85, but you have to pick it up or... Or I, I could deliver to you because it's um, good old Meredith is, is the one asking the questions and, and I'm going to take her her painting. So I've, if you'd like a, a pot, I can deliver deliver a pot too. And the chicken is uh, $40, $45. So, um, and th those are all the pots I've got out here today. Um Let's see, how long have I been talking? It's been 40 minutes, so I don't want to take up all your time. There, there's, um, there's 16 artists that are all participating in this virtual art fair. So if you look in the description of this video, there's a, um, a hashtag. It's, it's the, that numeral sign that says um, Home Sick Art Fair. If you're watching on Facebook, you could just click that and it should take you to everybody's entries that are participating in that art fair. And they're also doing this on Instagram and it works real similar. You could search for hashtag homesick art fair and all of the participants entries should show up. I'm going to do a live video on Instagram later in the afternoon. So if um, you'd like to watch that then um, I don't know exactly what time I'll do it, but um, I am going to do a live video on Instagram. And for it, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to... I've got a lot of note cards that are a fun way to share art with people, especially since we can't move around as much. It's kind of neat to get a card in the mail. And um, and, and these cards I sell for $6, which which is a really not expensive way to support my art if if you'd like to help keep me going but but you don't really have a lot of of um budget for for big expensive pieces of art and for instagram i'll probably go through these different cards i'll show off some of the different designs you could go to the the um you could go to my website, kenswinson.com, and see all of these cards. Okay, wait a second. Okay, so I just got two messages at once. Um, Joni wanted the chicken, so everybody, the chicken found its home. Oh, I'm not good at doing two things at once. Okay. The Pottery Wall Chicken and the Florida Charcoal. So both of these are Joni's. And and then Meredith, my agent, I think for, for Becky, wants a chicken picture. So I think... I think the chicken picture is this one, with me taking the chickens out of the tree. Um... Now, Meredith, I'll, I'll get in touch with you about it. I, I have this framed, and then I also have it unframed. So I, I can 
bring whichever whichever one she'd like. Just find out and let her know. I, I'm going to go ahead and take it off the wall just in case she wants the framed one. And I'm going to take Joni's charcoal drawing and chicken off the wall so that she gets... You know what? I'm actually going to leave the chicken there because I don't want it to get damaged. But, um, but you all, this has been a great show so far. I, I really appreciate your tuning in and your support. Um, she wanted the one on the wall. Okay, Meredith says she wants the one on the wall. So, so I've taken it down and I will, um, well, I'm going to get to take a trip to Lexington soon. And, and, um, Meredith, thanks so much for doing all the, well, and she wants the ginger jar. So, so I might have to rent a truck to take you all your art. I, I really, really am just blown away with, with all of your support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, wow. So, so like I said, we, we've all, everybody's improvising and trying to figure out how are we going to work from home when, as an artist, a lot of my income part of the work is, is usually in person. And all of those opportunities have pretty much disappeared for a while. And, and I think that Chris came up with a brilliant idea of having a virtual art fair. And um, hopefully you all will... will Spend the rest of the day looking at the other artists and, and supporting their work. Re remember the hashtag, Homesick Art Fair. Just use that hashtag on Facebook and Instagram. You can see all the different participating artists. Um, a handful of people have mentioned that, oh, I wish I had had enough time to get ready. I'd love to have participated in this art fair. And... In some of the communications I've had with Chris, the, the artist who came up with this idea, he mentioned doing this more than just one time. If, if this is successful, he'd like to do it more than just once. So, so if this is something you'd like to do, get in touch with Chris Plummer. If you send me a message, I could give you his contact information. Um, I've got a feeling it's going to be a while before we have big mass gatherings like... like the outdoor art fairs. So I think this is a pretty fun solution. All, all I've used is my phone and Facebook to do this. And, um, and, and I think the more the, the better. I, I can't wait to turn this off and I'm going to look at what everybody else is doing and look at their work. I, I've had some good sales, so I think I'm going to treat myself to some art, art too, to keep, keep supporting the culture and, and people who who are working hard as artists. I know sometimes when times get tight, art isn't one of those essentials like food or clothing or, or your house. But um, I know for me personally, living with a lot of art around me, it, it always lifts my spirits. And, and um, I love bringing a new piece of art into the house. It... it um, just brightens my day. There, there are things that I've bought 20 years ago, and I still smile when I go into that room and see them. So, so um, I don't know where I was going with that, but um, I don't think that art is non-essential, and, and I'm probably biased because, because I'm an artist, but I've got a feeling if you're watching this, you probably feel the same way. So, so I'm going to go. Thanks, everybody, for looking. I'm kind of disappointed nobody asked a question in the comments but but um i did get texts which which it, it worked but it just didn't work the way that i i thought it would and life is pretty much like that i guess it never works out the way that i think it will so so if you enjoyed this just um I'm going to do another one a little bit shorter, a little bit different on Instagram, and it'll be later in the afternoon. In the meantime, use that hashtag, HomesickArtFair, and take a look at what the other artists are doing, and, and um, if you can, support their work. I know that everybody's scrambling and doing what they can to, to get back to a little bit of normal. Everybody, thanks so much, especially Meredith and Joni and... and and um, everybody with with Brenda's bunch, I 
I want to say Carla. Oh, are you still there? Oh, okay, people are commenting. Awesome. Karen says, this looks great, Ken. Thank you, Karen. I, I'm glad you like it. I, I, I'm i real excited about the printmaking project that we're going to do really soon. So hopefully this might give you ideas of what what the thing we do together will look like. Gail says, it looks awesome. Thank you, Gail. I um wanted to do this outside, and it's been a rainy day, so... I ended up setting up in my bedroom. Believe, believe it or not, behind the panels is all of my bedroom stuff. And um, I didn't have my track lights, but I just got some little shop lights and set them up to light everything up. So hopefully you've been able to see everything really well. And then Margie says, I love this kind of show. Well... Well, thanks. Thanks for coming. Margie, Margie, you know I admire your work. Margie is a, um, a really talented plein air artist, and I've done a lot of real-life art shows, and one of my favorite parts of the show is getting to go to Margie's booth and see what, what she's been working on. And um, Margie, maybe this, if Chris keeps doing this, maybe you'd like to participate in the next next show. And then Elizabeth says, beautiful work as always, Ken. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I, I um, am doing my best. I always try to try to make something beautiful, something that makes me smile. And I, I really love it when it does that for other people, people as well. And Carla says, enjoyed seeing it. Well, Carla, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. And Samantha says, beautiful. Thank you, Samantha. Now, Carla would like to show the two birds that are in color. I think she's talking about this painting. This is a acrylic painting on paper, and it's in my handmade frame. It's it's um, two hundred and forty dollars, and this painting is unique for. A few reasons. It's an original painting, so that's unique. But um, <clears throat> the paper that I've painted this on has a print on the back, and it, it's a real complicated um, woodcut that didn't work out exactly right. I'm, I'm going to go into my studio and see if I can find an example. Let's see. Excuse the mess. This is a work workspace, and I don't have any lights. Um... Oh, I know what I could show you. So here's something I'm working on. And I don't know if any of you have watched a show called Antiques Roadshow, where sometimes the, the people will bring in art and antiques and have an appraiser look at it and, and um, tell them about the value of it. And sometimes people will bring in a piece of art that might be a painting where the artist flipped the painting over because... The, the first painting didn't work out so well. And the painting with the two birds is like this work in progress, where on the back, if you took it apart, there's some kind of a print. So it's kind of like a, like a little surprise, a little surprise that you can't see. But, um, but that painting is that way. And this church is also that, that way. I'm, I'm going to zoom in so you can see some of the, the details of the bird and the flowers. I love spring when all the trees flower. It's just such a pretty time of year. Um, hopefully you got to see what you wanted to see, Carla. If not, I, I could zoom back in or answer any more questions. Emily has a question. Can you tell me the price for the large print of the three birds framed? I always love your work. Thank you, Emily. Um, the price is two sixty, and it's it's one of my handmade frames, and the print is sixteen by twenty. So the frame, I believe, is twenty four by twenty 
it might be 20 by 28 or 24 by 28. Um, I, I could get a measuring tape and tell you exactly what the size is. This is a two colored woodcut. So I carved a plate for the background and then I carved a second plate for the foreground. And like the birds before, this is a, a spring picture. These, these are birds stealing all the cherries off my cherry tree. And it's okay, I don't mind sharing as long as they save some for me. And I'll back out so you can see. that. Now Sharon has a question. Um, I enjoyed your show. Great idea. I just hung my dancing squirrels yesterday. It brings a big smile to my day. Well, thank you, Sharon. Yeah, well, you've had those a little while. I'm glad they found their place where they wanted, wanted to hang. Um, Sharon's talking about a print that I don't have here, but I um, showed you the squirrels that were making music earlier there's a companion piece it's a panoramic print of squirrels dancing together and it it's just cute as a button you 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 I, I wish I had it to show you but but um you might just have to go visit Sharon and see see it in her house I, I know she has a lot of beautiful art and and I'm sure it looks great where she put it Carla said yes okay good good I Glad I was able to answer all your questions. Um, Emily, hopefully I answered your question too. If if not, just let me know. Becky has a question. I want the black and white goats, please. Message. Oh, well, Becky, thank you. I, for some reason, didn't get the message. Um, so I'm glad you also put a message in the Facebook. I think these are the goats you're talking about. These are the black and white goats. But it could also be the goats standing on top of each other. And it's black and white, but the paper is, um, it's, it's a craft brown paper. It's not exactly white. But now I heard the message come in. But I can't see the message. I wonder. I wonder why I, I can't get Becky's message. And I love getting messages from Becky. I haven't talked to you in a while, and I hope you're doing okay. I know you've had had um. I shouldn't talk about people's personal things, but I want to catch up. I want to know how you're doing. I I hope you're doing okay. I know. I know you usually are, so it's good to hear from you. Just just let me know which black and white goats you'd like. Um, Becky, it's so good to hear from you. Joni says the birds are fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Joni. You know me. I love, I love my birds. And Emily says it's beautiful. Thank you, Emily. Ah, Becky would like the bigger one, please. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, Becky, let me let me take this down. Do you know what, Becky? I need to go to Lexington to deliver to deliver Meredith's work. Um, I could just come down. I'll come down to Frankfurt. I want to see you in person. I'll I'll come with social distance and wear a mask and. Um, all of that, but I'd love to see you and just catch up. So I'll make arrangements with you offline on how to how to deliver deliver for you. Um, Don has a question. Hi, Don. Hi, Ken. How much for the church painting? Um, the church painting is two forty. I, I don't see the price on the front, but it's the same size and style. As the birds, so so it's two forty, and this church is um, it's based on a real place. There's there's a little town in eastern Kentucky. As you go towards Whitesburg, there's a little itty bitty town called Vico, Kentucky. I think that's how you say it. And um, there's a little church by a creek, and there's a little um, walking path. 
that the churchgoers will use to get to the church. And, and I thought it was just such a cool scene that I, I made a painting out of it. Well, you all, thank you again for for coming to the art show. I, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I I have. It, it's a little weird doing this online instead of in person. I'd I'd love to see you all in person even even more, but um, I I said I was going to stop earlier, and then a lot of people started talking, so I'm still still here. But I I am going to turn this off. But if you'd like to see more of my work, you could. All of this should be up on my website, and if you go to www.kenswenson.com, there's a gallery section with, with a few sections with paintings and printmaking, and, and um, you could see a lot of this if you wanted to zoom in and get better details, maybe look at the art without glare from the light. Um, that should all be on my website, and feel free to send a message if you have any questions or or anything and in the meantime thanks again for coming and be sure to look at and support the other artists that are doing this fair just use the hashtag homesick art fair and you can see the whole art festival so thanks again i'll see you all later bye bye